Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The military ensures that only its smartest and most adept recruits become pilots. And among those pilots, the most intelligent get to sit behind the cockpit of a fighter jet. Pilots have a seemingly unending list of items to remember from flight patterns to protocol when under duress. They also must stay sharp when flying at high altitudes, with less oxygen, or on long haul flights when fatigue sets in. This is why the U.S. military does everything it can to protect a pilot's brain. They wear helmets that take two days to fit and cost an estimated $400,000. Pilots who fly any jet within the family of the F-35 Lightning must go through a special multi-step helmet fitting process. The F-35, developed by Lockheed Martin in cooperation with other aerospace companies, is designed for air-to-air -air and air-to-ground missions. To execute those missions, the pilot must be ready to see, hear, and breathe properly. That's why the helmet is custom fitted to the pilot's head, using a combination of laser scans and manual adjustments. The helmet worn by an F-35 pilot is so expensive because it's the most technologically advanced. The F-35 is the first fighter to use a helmet mounted display. HMD gives the pilot unparalleled situational awareness. When the jet is flying above a target, the pilot can look directly at that target. The uninterrupted display allows the pilot to experience extreme spatial orientation and superior weapons targeting. Plus, with its night vision capabilities, HMD also allows the pilot to fly in the cover of darkness. This multi-phase fitting of an F-35 helmet is not just for vision purposes, but also to ensure that it's comfortable. A helmet that is the right size will reduce neck strain and fatigue. A too large helmet may also jeopardize the safety of the pilot. In the event of an emergency, a poorly fitted helmet can come off during ejection. Plus, a helmet is designed to work with other critical flight equipment, the ejection seat, the oxygen mask, and communication systems. A proper fit helps to ensure that these systems work together seamlessly.
reason I wanted to become a pilot, uh, as corny as it may be, was I watched uh, Top Gun when I was five years old and uh, I remember saying, yep, that's what I want to do. Um, as I got older, uh, I started to realize though that Top Gun is not necessarily factual. Uh, you know, there's a major difference between that movie and what you actually do in a fighter squadron, but uh, I continue to have that passion uh, to become a fighter pilot. But a pilot's path from student to the jet is much more arduous and time-consuming than any movie can show. The process to become a U.S. fighter pilot begins with a four-year stint at the Air Force Academy, followed by a year of pilot training. Once selected to be a fighter pilot, a two-month introductory course on fighter fundamentals is required, followed by another fundamentals course. Only then is the pilot invited to be a part of his or her first operational squadron. While the path might not be the same, the fighter pilot uniform seen in Top Gun is similar to what military pilots wear in real life. F-35 pilots typically don a flight suit and a helmet. The flight suit is made of fire-resistant material, typically a combination of materials such as Nomex and Gore-Tex, which also protect against the elements. The suit may have built-in ventilation and moisture-wicking properties to help regulate the pilot's body temperature too. To get into their aircraft, pilots use a built-in telescopic ladder. The F-35 pilot ladder is lightweight and easily portable. Even with those qualities, it's designed to provide a durable and stable platform for the pilot to stand on while entering and exiting the aircraft. It may also have safety features like handrails and non-slip surfaces. When not in use, it's safely stowed in the aircraft fuselage out of sight. Every inch of space is used in military jets. When they do have to carry something extra, like cargo, engineers have to be sure that the aircraft's weight, balance, and aerodynamics are not affected. Often that cargo is carried externally. A lot of people see these whenever we're flying in, they think they're external fuel tanks. So what we use these for is to uh, obviously travel. Uh, we throw our stuff in here. Uh, this is gonna be for the pilot stuff. And then we always throw the maintenance stuff on this side. Same exact pod, uh, we just put them on different sides, store different things in them. Those external tanks are actually cargo pods. The pod is often used to carry the pilot's personal belongings, or in some cases, to deliver small packages to the plane's destination. Typically mounted beneath the fuselage or under the wings, cargo pods are designed to be aerodynamic and not interfere with the aircraft's performance. Before takeoff, 
a pilot performs a thorough pre-flight check of the airplane body and any attachments. The pilot checks the wings, fuselage and control surfaces for any damage or signs of wear and tear. In the cockpit, the pilot checks out the flight controls. He or she will ensure that the flaps and rudder are all functioning properly and in the correct position for takeoff. The pilot also reviews the fuel system to ensure that there's enough gas to get to where the plane needs to go. It's also critical for the pilot to verify the communication system. Pilot prep is even more detailed for those flying the U-2. As it's a single seater, any pilot flying this aircraft is alone and very high up in the sky. Any wrong move or problem with the aircraft could be deadly. The U-2 is a reconnaissance aircraft and it operates above a range most enemy aircraft can operate. That allows it to collect intelligence over a large area. Developed at the beginning of the Cold War in the 1950s, the U-2 became famous in 1960 when it was shot down over the Soviet Union. It also caused a major diplomatic crisis. The U-2 has a distinctive design, a long slender fuselage and long wings mounted high. With its advanced technology and capabilities, the U-2 remained in service for many years. While it remains in service, most of its missions have been replaced by more advanced UAV reconnaissance aircraft. The preparation process for a U-2 pilot involves several stages. Pilots must be in excellent shape and they must undergo regular medical exams. This is to ensure they're able to handle the stresses of flying high up in the atmosphere. In flight, pilots wear a flight suit, which resembles more of an outfit that might remind you of an astronaut. The helmet is round and locks into the full pressure suit. This suit will help keep the pilot alive if the plane becomes depressurized. The suit would keep the pilot from going unconscious and developing hypoxia and might even prevent death. The brightly colored suit is made of multiple layers. This protects against the cold and has a built-in communication system and even a parachute. Before taking off, U-2 pilots prepare for their mission by studying the flight plan, reviewing the intelligence information they wish to collect, and familiarizing themselves with protocol should they be in an emergency situation. No matter what kind of plane they are in, 
what the mission entails, or where they are flying, the commonality among all fighter pilots is their immense knowledge, training, and expertise. The U.S. military knows their human assets must be protected, and that's why no expense is spared to keep these men and women safe. From helmets that cost nearly half a million dollars to planes that are equipped with pods to carry all essential equipment, the military ensures that its members have everything they need to stay safe and keep the mission on course. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.